Hey! How you doing? My name's Ryan, and today I'm designing the most important batch of custom LEGO minifigures I've ever made. Figures based on X-Men 97. Why are these so important? Well, for one, a lot of you guys have requested these characters in the comment sections of my other videos, and I want to make them worth the wait. But also, for the first time ever, these figures will not be for my private collection. Instead, they'll be part of a much bigger project. Fellow LEGO YouTuber SCDude1999 is working on an X-Men 97 mock right now, and he's hired me to make some custom characters to flesh out the team. So not only do I need to match the designs of the characters and the LEGO aesthetic, but also I need my artwork to be able to stand side by side with the likes of Beast, Wolverine, and Storm from the LEGO Marvel CMF Series 2. And those are some of the best Marvel figures ever made, so Pretty high bar here. I want my designs to be top notch. Otherwise, I might end up on SC Dude 1999's list of things that trigger LEGO Marvel fans. Why? With the expectations set, my first figure up is Morph. Probably the easiest to design out of the batch I'm making. The basic elements are a yellow jumpsuit under a brown jacket. So I'll start with the custom torso I made for Agent Mobius, which has the brown jacket already. I'll first remove all the details and change the shirt to yellow. Then I'm adding accent lines on the jumpsuit to imply muscles and shapes without having to outline anything. Next, I'll adjust the collar and add a few pockets down the front of the jacket. And finally, I'll draw the belt, which is a pretty simple design in red with the X insignia, which took me a while to find the right font, but after a little bit of searching, I came across a perfect impact font. And the logo will also be placed on the jacket lapel once I lock down the right size of the letter. With the torso design done, this is usually where I'd pick the other pieces to flesh out the figure, but this time's a little bit different. SCDude 1999 has some ideas for what pieces he wants to use for these figures based on what's already in his collection, so I won't know what the final figure looks like until later on. So I really hope my designs match the vision that SC Dude has for these characters. Now, the second X-Men I'm designing is Jubilee. And considering several of the characters I'm working on today have sort of the same layout of colorful shirt underneath jacket, I'm going to use Morph's design file as the base for Jubilee as opposed to starting from scratch. Now, I'm not necessarily copying design from figure to figure. Think of it as I'm copying the same layout, the same project file template, as opposed to designing everything from scratch each time. It makes it more efficient for me to tweak and edit than have to redraw. But either way, the first step is to remove all the morph specific details like the belt and pockets. Then I'll tweak the jacket collar and overall color scheme to match Jubilee's trench coat. So yellow jacket and pink shirt. Now for the detail lines, which are wrinkles on the shirt, this line pattern on the jacket, and then these circular dangling accents attached to the collar and larger wrinkle lines and highlights on the jacket itself. Then I thought I was done, but I was missing some major details on the shirt that my original reference image didn't show. So lesson learned, always have more than one reference photo when designing. Anyway, I added this yellow circle icon and this long bold accent line that crosses the shirt and runs along the entire torso. I'm rather happy with this design. I hope that the black line accent on the shirt isn't too thin that when the whole thing is shrunk down, it becomes almost unnoticeable. I think it will work, but I won't know until the final figure. And the third character on my list to design is Gambit, a breakout star of X-Men 97. And for those of you wondering, yes, I did watch all of X-Men 97. It's fantastic. Once again, I'm starting with the previous character's file, this case Jubilee, and once again, the first step is to remove all of the details and adjust the color. So after changing the jacket color to brown, I'm adding this unique lining pattern on the collars, which I hope reads well when tiny. For a lot of these designs, I'll only flesh out one side of the collar, then copy and flip the graphic to ensure it's even. Now for the midsection, there are these ab-like shapes on the stomach, and a massive blue neck piece with these rounded accent lines, and almost a star pattern on the front, and a similar looking blue belt too. Add in all my shadows and highlights, and this gambit torso is complete. And that leaves us with the fourth and final figure I was asked to make, which is Bishop, who, for the first time in this project, I have to start from scratch design-wise. His layout is so different from any of the other X-Men characters, or really any other character I've designed so far, that I just have to start from nothing. I have to have a blank canvas. 
to begin with. The first step is to draw the abs on this blue torso, which I'm drawing inspiration from this shirtless minifigure torso. Next is this massive yellow belt, which has two levels and line patterns scattered throughout. But then, before finishing off the belt, I need to add the pectoral muscles on Bishop's torso, even though most of it will be covered by his red scarf. The key to this design is layering, with shadows and highlights to visually showcase which elements go below or above other aspects. On top of everything else on the very front of this design is the scarf, and it took me a few tries to get the look that I like because I wanted the scarf to feel layered itself, like it was bunched up and folded over itself. Below that is the vertical yellow belt and all the line details on it. But on top of the vertical and horizontal belt is the X-Men logo, which I copied from Morph. The shadow lines here, as I said, will be critical to keep the visual language as intuitive as possible. It should be very clear which elements go on top of which ones on first glance. But once all the highlights and shadows are added, Bishop's torso feels and looks rather simple to understand, which means I did my job right. And with the designs for my four X-Men torsos complete, I have one more crucial step before printing, and that's to remove the color of the Lego piece I want to print on from my artwork. That way, I avoid the possibility of printing slightly off yellow onto a yellow torso in Jubilee's case. With that, the artwork is sent to the print shop, and now it's kind of a waiting game. So, SC Dude 1999, it is so good to meet you, and I'm very excited to see what the figures look like. You have them in the mail, correct? I sure do. So here we have Jubilee's torso over here. Oh, that came out nice and yellow, actually, it's a good match. Yeah. One of the things I was really curious about was, I'm just designing the torsos. You had in mind pieces for these characters already, for the head, for the legs, and for the hair. So what did you pick for each character? I, I want to see what these characters look like, kind of fully fleshed out, if you have that on hand. Here's Jubilee. Oh, that turned out so well. I simply used the cape from Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter, and I thought it just worked really well with the jacket. And the goggles are from the Gok Gok from Spidey and his Amazing Friends. The, the hair is just like Tony Stark hair, because it's like the closest thing I have for now. And the legs come from Finn from Adventure Time. That's an older, what is it, the, the Dimensions figure? Yeah, from like 2017, I believe. I think you picked some fantastic pieces to flesh out Jubilee. Does the torso design fit with the character and fit with what you had in mind for the figure? Yeah, it's pretty much how I imagined the character would turn out. I think if, you know, they had a custom cape, then uh, they would, it would really make this uh, more detailed. Yeah, I think we need jackets. We need Lego jackets. They've been making yeah. them for off-brand figures for years now. I think Lego... I think they're trying to avoid pushing cloth fabric over the arm and... And then they have Storm, you know, so... Yeah, they had Storm, and both Storm characters, both old and new, have that cloth piece. So, if anything, the X-Men characters are already ripe and prime, ready for custom cloth pieces. Who's next to see? Alright, up next we have Morph. Okay, okay, I, I like the way that turned out. I was worried about printing the yellow onto the brown torso but I think there's an, uh, just enough color contrast for that to play out well. Here for Morph, I used Metamorpho's head from DC, and I customized the legs from the LEGO City character and a spaceman, and I think it looks really, really good. All right, so I guess the question, because you know, I'm, I'm designing these for someone for the very first time, are you happy with the torso? Does it work with the figure? Yeah, it really works. Uh, I really think it's really genuine as a minifigure. That's, I really appreciate the compliment. I've always tried to match the aesthetic that LEGO has. A lot of designers have their own sort of touch, their own sort of calling card, be it shading, shadows, details, but I really wanted this to stand head and shoulders with the CMF figures that it feels really cohesive, so I'm glad to hear that you think it feels authentic. And here we have this ship. Okay, I really like the way that turned out. I, I'm glad there's enough color contrast between the yellow and the blue and the red. I even grabbed another scarf just so it looks like it's all around, so... It's kind of like Kylo Ren when you had the helmet, and then you had the helmet print underneath the mask for one of the earlier Force Awakens sets. This is what it looks like now with, uh, I used... Oh, um, that's cool looking. I kind of reused the head and hair from the Ant-Man character from the CMF series. Uh, a Goliath. Goliath? Yeah. Smart call. Yeah, and I just used a regular blaster from, like, Star Wars or Galaxy Squad. The legs come from Icarus from Eternals. 
Oh, I love that. So, again, same question. Does this torso fit with your vision of the character? And are you happy with it? I'm really happy with it. I think the scarf really works along with the one that I chose for it. And even the, in some way, the head is very similar to how Bishop was in the series. So that leaves with one more figure left, I, a, a fan favorite. This is one I was really excited for. Uh, we have Gambit. And certainly I imagine if Lego were to make an X-Men set, knowing more about X-Men 97, they probably would have included Gambit in that x jack set because of how important he plays a role in the series. Okay, that, that honestly looks very much like some of the customs that you buy for like 30 bucks on sites like Firestar Toys. Walk me through the pieces here. All right, so of course the torso is what you made, and the head is from a Stormtrooper from 2013, and it has a little bit of stubble, but I kind of think it works. I wish it had red eyes. I, I was tempted to use a Sharpie for a moment, but I'm like, I don't think I want to trigger Lego Marvel fans from, you know, saying wild time. Exactly. Um, who would ever say that, right? <laughs> who would ever say that? The legs come from uh, Blue Beetle. It's literally the only minifigure that I have with black and blue printing. The weapon looks like you had like a lightsaber hilt with two power glass pieces. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, since he can make all that energy. Yeah. And it's just my way of like showing like him using his powers. And whose hairpiece is that? I'm going to organize that hairpiece on first glance. Okay, so honestly, I literally forgot who it was. I think it's from a Ninjago character from the Lego Ninjago movie. But I could be wrong. Ninjago is one of the sub-themes I just don't know about at all. So uh, I, I don't really have any knowledge of those pieces. And they, they do come in handy. I used a couple pieces for my Fantastic Four figures. So it's kind of cool to see Ninjago just kind of scattered throughout my custom minifigures as I make them. But same question as always. Does the torso fit with your vision of the character? Or does it fit with your vision of the figure? I think it really does. I'm just really impressed by the detail on it and just the way that I can finally just recreate, you know, one of my favorite characters, you know. Well, in that case, I am really glad that you enjoy the torsos that I designed for you. I'm very happy they fit with all the pieces you picked for the character because, again, this is the first time I've ever designed a torso without knowing ahead of time what it was going to look like in its fully finished state. But beyond the figures, you have an entire mock you're working on for all of these characters to exist and live in. Yes, I can't wait to showcase you what I have. If you want to see SC Dude's final mock, check out his video linked in the description box down below. And while you're there, you can download all of my custom LEGO artwork, all my LEGO pieces and torsos I've ever made for free. Just enter the password hey hey, all lowercase no spaces for access to all the Adobe files, PNGs, and even the studio files for my custom builds. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.